even though I have a miter saw these days, when it comes to small parts or uh, needing very high accuracy, I always turn to my crosscut sled. So today we're going to be building a advanced crosscut sled. Uh, um, this one's going to be a little bit nicer and have a few more features than my previous sled. To start off with, I've got a meter wide panel by about 600 mil deep. It's 12 mil or half inch Baltic birch ply. I'm opting for birch ply because it is very strong, stable and very stiff and those things are, are quite useful to have when you're trying to get a lot of accuracy out of stuff. So the first step is we need to do some layout. I'm going to have my sled offset to one side, so on one side of the blade it'll be 550mm and on the other it'll be 450 uh, so we need to do some layout so that everything lines up in the right spot. First off we need to know the kerf of our blade. It doesn't have to be exact uh, width but it is a good idea to get it fairly close so that all our layout lines will be right from there. We also need to know the location of the miter slots. Again the exact location or exact width isn't super critical but having a ballpark figure means that we can do the rest of our layout correctly. I'm going to extend those lines because this sled will have replaceable zero clearance inserts we're going to have to have a way to attach those um, whether it's a dado insert or whether it's an angled cut. If it's an angled cut we need to measure at least 12 mil over in my case I'm actually going to go to 20 and I know that my threaded inserts can sit on this side of the line. Likewise for dado cuts uh, my saw can handle, I think it's up to 21 mil, so I'm going to put a mark at 20 because I probably will never go past three quarter inch. Um, but I'm actually going to start those inserts or the edge of those at 30 mil. And again, I'm going to extend those lines down. So these lines here are no go lines, so nothing metal or anything really can go in between there because these will potentially be cut up. To add extra functionality to the sled, we're going to have some accessory tracks. These tracks are going to be all for uh, T slot bolts and little star knobs. We can add things like an angled fence or some extra hold downs for holding difficult clamp wood, such as, I don't know, like a nice arch that you might want to square up one end, but you couldn't safely hold that without hold downs. So this is going to be the back of the sled, this is the front. This is this fence here needs to be actually this one is it will be something taller than this, but let's use this for an example. We need to know the location of our runners, so we next time we put the grooves for these bolts over top of those. So with our fence sitting, let's say it's roughly there, we can come in and put a bolt, I don't know, not too close to the edge end there because honestly we don't need it there. Uh, I'm going to say 120 mil. Now the accessories I've got in mind don't require symmetry, though if you've got something in mind obviously you can make it as symmetrical as you like, in reference with the line there. And likewise at the front of the slope we're going to have a fence obviously. Um, mine's going to be made out of three laminations of birch ply. So I can make sure that it would be at least 36mm from the front, but honestly we can go a little bit further. Most cases like this, if you're going to have a hold down and it's a shop made hold down, or you just make it a little bit longer and it's going to hold just fine. So again from the front I'm going to make that uh, 120mm which will be roughly uh, 5 inches I think. With the accessory track slots marked out they need to be pre-drilled before the lamination as we'll lose all of the layout lines. To keep it as accurate as possible I use my all to mark the location then drill a half inch hole with a force a bit until just the spur pokes out the other side. Then I can flip it and use the spur hole to drill from the other side, minimising tear out. Usually it should be more graceful than this though. Then the lamination can take place. Note I'm placing the insert strip in position but not gluing it down. This is just for alignment as the other panels will butt up against it. Apart from just clamps, consider using weights to evenly distribute pressure throughout the entire lamination. I used some cast iron table saw wings in their box. 
After that's dried and out of clamps, take your router with a half inch bit and a straight edge. Position the straight edge so that the router bit will drop into the hole at both ends. Router groove deep enough that the head of the bolt won't touch the table. For me, I ended up just routing down through the 12 mm plywood and I'd recommend doing this in several passes. At one end, route all the way through, but only long enough that the bolt head will fit through. After that's routed without moving the guide rail, switch to a smaller bit that matches the diameter of your bolt threads, in my case 5 sixteenths of an inch. Doing it this way is a bit more time consuming with so many bit changes, but it means that all the through slots will be in the dead centre of the groove. Now is a really good time to sand everything. I only needed to use 180 grit sandpaper as the plywood already had good faces. You really only need a smoothish surface. Take care not to create divots from sanding. Make sure you do both the top and bottom so that it glides well. The runners should be made from a hardwood. The denser the better. Take your time getting an exact fit. You're better off sneaking up to the exact width than overshooting. You want it to slide up and down smoothly but without any side to side wobble. And it's time to thickness the runners. Ideally you want it slightly below the surface of the table so that the sled itself isn't elevated and doesn't catch on anything in the track such as dust. Again sneak up on this measurement and take as many passes as you need. To attach the runners I put tape on both sides of my saw to avoid any glue getting on the saw table and elevate the runners above the surface using 5 cent pieces. Apply pressure in the form of weights, such as these small part spins. While I waited for the glue to dry, I shaped the rear fence of the sled. This can be made of anything, plywood, hardwood, softwood, but I had some scrap tassie oak lying around from mum's furniture. Make sure it's at least as tall as the maximum blade height in the centre point where the blade will go through. I cut out some curves to help reduce weight and make it look a bit prettier. With the runners dried, I drilled and countersunk the screws. You can have just screws or just glue, but it doesn't hurt to have both. It was then time to work on the front fence. I cut out the piece that will make up the final lamination and interchangeable zero clearance plate. Then marked out the lengths that needed to be cut. Much like the sled base, the removable insert was used to position the outside portions. Be sure to have at least one edge with nothing overhanging so that you can square it up on the table saw later. For the insert plates, I'm holding them in with T-nuts and cap screws. So to get the exact location I wanted, I used a 1mm drill bit to locate them, then counterboard with a forstner bit on the underside. Then finally a through hole. T-nuts need to be hammered in and I'll probably go back and add some CA or epoxy to permanently fix them in place. It was then time to affix the back fence. This doesn't need to be lined up or square to anything, it's really just to hold the two pieces of the base together. Sink as many screws to make it nice and firm, but make sure to avoid where the blade and insert plates will be. Then cut a slot almost all the way through, stopping just short of where the front fence will be. Once that's cut, you can use a large square to position the fence. A 
attach it with screws at either end. If it's not perfect at this stage, don't fret. This is just the initial calibration. and That's why you just use one screw at either end. With the insert plates installed, I flipped the slate upside down and drilled through the T-nuts to locate where the holes in the plates needed to be. Drill and countersink those for the cap screws. It's now time to do the initial cuts with the insert plates in and to finally check the calibration of the front fence. I'm going to stop here and recommend you check out any one of these quality videos on the five cut method. I'd rather you check out those videos than me butchering the explanation on how, how to calibrate fences. Once my fence was calibrated, I cut some aluminium T-track down to length and screwed it on top of the fence. I then applied a coat of D-Wax shellac. This helps protect the sled and makes it look a bit nicer, but it also ma makes it much easier to clean. Also do this on the underside as it will help it slide better. So first up, I'd like to apologise for the audio issues. A uh, few issues with cables being unplugged or me forgetting to turn microphones on. Uh, and Hopefully in the future, I can avoid those issues. Uh, secondly, I'd like to thank Joe Love. He's one of the excellent moderators on the woodworking subreddit over on Reddit. Uh, and this sled is based on his instructable on creating better crosscut sleds. Uh, he does some amazing stuff with hand tools, particularly all of his um, wooden bodied hand planes and other tools and I'd love it if you'd do more instructables or videos on those as they really are excellent. He also does a lot of other stuff uh, that he sells over on Etsy so I'll have a link to his Instagram account and to his Etsy store in the description below. Thirdly, I'm not going to show this in action just yet. Uh, there will be a follow-up video showing off some accessories as well as things like stop block uh, and all the different plates. So I will show that in action then end of the day most of you have probably seen what a crosscut sled looks like in action but I'll go into more detail while you want this style of sled because of its versatility. If you would prefer written instructions with photos as you might find the pacing a little bit easier to follow along I'll have a link in the description below to Joe's Instructable which is very detailed. Thanks for watching.